Welcome everybody. What's going on? I'm super excited to be here. I am Sergio Paez and we are Storyboard Art. We're a proud sponsor of the Lightbox Expo. Welcome you guys. Uh, I'm super excited. I got so much to talk about and I can't wait to get started here. So I welcome everybody who's uh, coming to this chat. You're seeing us on Facebook and maybe you're seeing us on YouTube. You might even be seeing us on our uh, Lightbox Expo page that we have uh, embedded there, our chat here. So uh, one way to contact us, you can chat on Facebook or you can chat on uh, YouTube, either one, and that'll get to us and we can all share the comments together. So if you're in the right place, you're at the uh, Storyboard Art, welcome to Lightbox Expo chat. We're gonna go for about an hour. And in this conversation, we're gonna talk a little bit about what we're doing for this whole weekend, what we have been doing for this whole week, which has been thrilling, just thrilling. I can't wait to get into that stuff. And then uh, the lineup of what we're doing, and we're gonna get to a Q&A. So I wanna hear from you guys. I wanna hear what questions you have on your mind. Welcome to anybody who has been doing the Drawing and Portfolio Challenge. So if you have questions about that, uh, we've also opened our mentorship registration. There's been a lot of interest on that one uh, this week, and it's just been phenomenal. The response is amazing, and I love connecting with story artists. So it's great to have you guys here. Um, at any time uh, you have a question, go ahead and type that in the chat and we'll see if we can get that. We'll pull those up on screen. So uh, the first thing I should do is let me pull this up and give you the, the banner for our uh, Lightbox Expo page. And you can see that on screen right now. It's the prostoryboardart.org slash LBX 2020. Now, uh, if you go to that link, in fact, let me just copy and paste that and I'll put it up uh, on screen because that's probably easier. Give me a second here while I pull that up. And that way we can share what we're gonna do this whole weekend. So uh, so let me, actually, let me see if I can do a screen share because this is kind of what we're gonna be doing the whole week is just talking about this stuff. And so uh, it's just important that we get everything all squared away. So give me a second while I move my windows from one side of my monitors. As you can see, I'm monitoring my chat here. Now, hopefully you guys are all story artists and doing some really cool stuff because that's what uh, that's what it's all about. That's what we want you guys to be doing and and just learning and, and getting getting awesome at at everything uh, story related. So let me bring this up big. So this is the, the landing page we have for for Lightbox Expo. Hopefully you guys have seen this now announcement here. There has been such an amazing response from the Lightbox Expo uh, this year that I think it brought down the servers. <laughs> So the Lightbox Expo, if you go to that uh, lightboxexpo.com website, uh, the latest of what I've seen, I'm sure they're getting that up as fast as possible, but the Discord channel for Lightbox is really is really going off. So if you have any questions or any kind of uh, comments or things to share, I think that's probably the place to do it for now. From what I hear, they're gonna bring that up, uh, they're gonna bring that back up soon. You can find our stuff for storyboard art specific things on this webpage. And that's what uh, we have here. So you guys are chatting on YouTube here. We have the YouTube embed. I'm not gonna push play there because uh, you're gonna get an echo if I do that. And you can see a couple of the events that we're, that we're doing this week. Uh, I'll be talking a little bit about uh, each one of these. So the Drawing Portfolio Challenge and the mentorship. And you can still sign up for the Drawing and Portfolio Challenge. This is a free course. You can see the trailer there. I'll probably play that a little bit later for everybody. But this is the important part is the event schedule. This is something that uh, you'd want to take note of because what we're going to do this whole uh, weekend for uh, Lightbox Expo is just sponsor a lot of talks and focus on visual storytelling and getting getting better at doing story. Basically, that's what we're all about. And um, I've done a lot of visual storytelling in my career, and this is really some of the, the the like the key learning things that I wished I had when I was starting out. This is what we're trying to do this whole weekend. So you can see that and, and look through that. We're gonna be doing live streams all day today. So this is the first one. And then uh, catch us uh, at 3 p.m. For, for the next one, that's the afternoon stream. And uh, I'm gonna be talking about five key skills to boost your storytelling. And, um, and that's a little bit different from the Drawing Portfolio Challenge. So you might wanna tune into that if you've been following us on, on, that, on that challenge event. Then we're gonna do an evening live stream Q&A and I got a special guest there who's gonna come uh, uh, kind of co-host that with me. Uh, my good buddy and excellent, amazing comic and story artist, Wahab Algarni. So he'll be here with us as well. And then Saturday, we got a great uh, initial event, which is this uh, kind of roundtable talk from a bunch of good buddies of mine. 
just ultra talented story people. That one is not to be missed. I really think it's going to be the highlight of uh, of our storytelling uh, weekend that we're doing for for storyboard art. And you can see the rest of that. Again, we're going to have multiple streams on Saturday and just two on Sunday. But Sunday, we're also inviting uh, our our good buddy Nick Sung, and he is uh, the this year the co instructor for. Um, for the mentorship. So we'll be talking a little bit about that. So let me bring, let me move my screen again. And uh, and I'm gonna be doing all kinds of stuff, sharing things with you and, and hopefully even doing some demos. You can see my Cintiq in, in the foreground here. <laughs> and that's always, uh, that's always some cool stuff that uh, it's fun to show those things. All right, so let me, let me get to uh, talking a little bit about, this is kind of the intro of what we've been doing. This whole week, we've been warming up a lot of people that have been following us in the Storyboard Art community with the Drawing and Portfolio Challenge event. Now, this one, the response has been amazing. Now, I apologize if I have not gotten to your submission yet. I spent a, a lot, many hours yesterday uh, emailing people directly and going over with notes on some of the stuff they've done. I've been blown away, just super inspired by everybody who's participating in this. And I think I think all of you guys can see just the quality quality level is great. Where are these guys coming from? They're coming out of the woodwork and bringing some awesome competition to all of us. And, and I say that in a good way because this is like, this is a family of artists here and we should all support ourselves as story guys because uh, it's great to see everybody doing quality work. This is what I say when it comes to story is that everybody has their unique style when it comes to storytelling and their unique take. It's kind of like handwriting. Everybody has their own unique handwriting. Same thing goes with storytelling and the way that you're going to elaborate a scene and, and knock out some, some really cool storytelling panels. So I think you guys are seeing that. And the way you can see that is in our Facebook group at Visual Storytellers United. So click on any of the links that we have on that landing page I just showed you, and you're going to see that there too. Um, Big shout out, I should say, to uh, to the guys that have been super active, and I just want to call out some of our former mentorship guys. Uh, Chad Pickerel has been helping us behind the scenes this whole week with the Drawing Portfolio Challenge, so thank you, Chad. You're awesome. And then I want to give a big thanks to Jean-Claude uh, De La Run. Big JC, I see you posting all the time, and you're a and also a mentorship alum and a very talented story artist uh, yourself. So keep up the good work, my friend, and I, I love seeing everybody's posts. Uh, I should also mention... I should give a big shout out to the storyboard our crew because <laughs> I don't do this alone. We have a big team of people helping us out. So thanks to Keely, Dar, Wahab, and my good buddy, Anthony, who I just got some messages uh, from him this morning. So big shout out to you guys as well. All right, let's get into uh, what we're talking about here. Now, I want to recommend a couple things that you that you want to do for this Lightbox weekend, okay? The big one, the big one you're going to do, now let's assume all the servers are working great and you're going to connect with people. Imagine that there's just this big group of artists that all of a sudden you get to participate in. What's the first thing you should be doing? One, you should be connecting with them. That's so easy to do nowadays with social media. You want to get on your social media and, and just exchange your, your contacts. And how about we do that here? I would invite all you guys in the chat to do the same. Do you have any cool images to show? Maybe you can grab that uh, the Facebook post that you did in the Visual Storytellers United page for our drawing portfolio challenge. If you have something you're proud of, just grab the link. Each one of those posts has a like unique URL that you can you can copy that and you can paste that anywhere. You can paste that in your LinkedIn. You can pay, put that in your blog, whatever you're doing. The thing is you wanna connect with people. This is all about the networking stuff. I didn't understand this when I first came out of school as a story guy and I, I had to you know, kind of figure it out the hard way, like the school of hard knocks, right, as we all say. And the, the internet was not as well developed when I came out of school. <laughs> I'm kind of dating myself, but yeah, it's true. And uh, I've been at this for, for a number of decades. And after a while, you, you kind of figure it out by banging your head against the wall so many times. And I'm telling you, the network is huge. Why? Let me tell you why, because you're gonna get a job through your network. That's the way I've gotten most of my jobs. It's by asking people what's going on, connecting with others and seeing what's hot in the industry. Those are the people who are gonna, they're going to really help you out. Now you do this in a, in a positive collaborative way. You're not out there to be sneaky and like get an insider tip from somebody. It's just an organic, natural feeling. I think as artists, we all have similar interests. I hope you guys all like watching movies. I hope all you guys like drawing and telling stories. That's the kind of stuff that we do. And because of that, it's easy to connect with other people who have like-minded interests. Okay. Um, so that is, that's a really good way to do it now. So the networking that's going to happen, this whole light box 
is really something you want to do. So if you're in any chat, if you go to the schedule for Lightbox, the stuff that we do, absolutely, we want to be connecting with each other. But if you go to any other chat, if somebody has a live stream, if they're doing some kind of Zoom, uh, Zoom workshop uh, for Lightbox a weekend with all the talented people there, you want to uh, you want to participate. You want to chime in and give some supportive comments and also share your own links, share some of the work that you're doing. This is one of the reasons, let me get back to what we've been talking about, what we'll be doing this whole week. This is one of the reasons why we sponsored this drawing and portfolio challenge. So uh, let me describe that uh, a little bit more for those of you guys who may not understand what I'm talking about. We sponsored a, a free course. I'm the one leading that course and we've, we're going through five lessons. Right now we're about lesson three. That's about to hit for most people, for some people that hit today. And uh, each one of those lessons has a challenge. And it's a challenge so that you draw with me and then we're all going to draw together. The response has been incredible. <laughs> so overwhelming. In fact, I'm scrambling to get uh, behind everybody and try and, and give comments to everybody. So that's why I have my backup with uh, guys like JC, Chad, and, and Wahab, who's helping me there in the background and everybody else on the storyboard, our team. But uh, that's the idea is that you get feedback on what you're doing and then you improve. And this whole week, if you've been doing some drawings, guess what? You have some images to show other people for Lightbox and for your portfolio. That's what we're going to be doing in lessons four and five is compi compiling all this into a final portfolio. And then you're going to have something to share. So the idea was that you build this up, you do your images, you create your drawings, you have something to show for Lightbox. And then after Lightbox, when you've connected to all those guys, we're going to finish up the portfolio. And then now you have something that you can email out or you can send a download link or you know point them to your website. That's really going to be something cool that you want to do for that. Okay. Uh, so, oh, I should also mention you can still sign up for that drawing portfolio challenge. I'm going to show you a trailer in a minute uh, about that event uh, so that you kind of get an idea. Now, if you've been following up for, for following us at Storyboard Art, you've probably seen this before, but I think it's a good idea just as uh, just as that networking tip to get more people into the fold. It's been amazing. There are hundreds and hundreds of artists participating in that event. It's truly uh, flattering and mind blowing. Okay. Uh, now, I should mention about that as well, uh, that this weekend we're going to be busy with Lightbox. So I have a, a number of, of live chats that I'm going to do. So if I'm a little bit slow on the response, please forgive me on that. But I promise I'll pick it up on Sunday and Monday of, and, and next week when we continue through lesson four and five with that challenge event. So we still have uh, a week, a little over a week to uh, continue this challenge event. So if you're just starting with that or you just signed up today, it's the first time you hear about it, um, that, you know, don't worry, you can still do that. Okay. Uh, and really quickly, let me do this. This only takes, I think it's only 30 seconds, uh, the trailer here. Yeah. Or if it's a minute, let me play this for you guys and, uh, and hopefully it'll get excited to draw. Sergio Paez is the director. I want to shut them out particularly because I, I think this was a very well-directed episode. In animation, you don't get to see that or say that a lot. All right. Yes. Hopefully that uh, gets you jazzed up. Now you saw me all over that. Why? Because that's a lot of my work. Okay. So I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to talk a little bit about that because I want to give you a little intro about who I am and what I do. So in that short trailer, you saw clips and, and snippets of some of the artwork that I've done and some of the projects and films that I've worked on. Uh, some of them uh, are, are still yet to be released. And most I've done a lot in my career. I've done animation. I've done freelance. I've done live action work. Uh, I've even done video games and, and now virtual reality stuff. So I've worked in many different mediums, all storytelling related, all storyboarding stuff. And now I've gotten into directing. So uh, recently I was working on a live action uh, film 
uh, that's that's amazing. That's that's turning out really great with the creators that are that are taking that over. And then uh, I'm also been part of uh, Lucasfilm for many years. So I was directing on the Star Wars Rebels uh, animated TV show, and also the Star Wars Resistance project. With both of those. We're, we're nominated for Emmys and won a bunch of awards. So that's really great to be part of that. The, the team there was amazing. Uh, back in the day, I also started out at Lucasfilm on Clone Wars. A lot of you guys remember that show and, and hit us up because of that. Now, a couple of things that you've seen me do and, you know, in that trailer and other things is uh, generally what, I, what my career consists of is doing a lot of drawings and illustrations, but I also got into previs and doing a lot of animatics. So uh, I started out as a 2D animator, in fact, and that, that kind of transitioned into doing story work. And I just continued doing story work. I really love doing story. And then that that blossomed into doing more technique and more stuff. And I, I've done previs now, which is all very much related. It's all filmmaking, it's storytelling, and it's all constructing images and that kind of stuff. All right. So I invite you to, to come to, to see what we'll be doing in that, that drawing and portfolio challenge. Now, the other thing that uh, I want to mention is if you guys have have any topics or any things that you're, that, that you're struggling with, that you want to be uh, improving on, uh, that's the kind of stuff we want to hear about because we're all about helping others and pointing you in the right direction. Now, I may not have the answer. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have all of the answers. In fact, I'm still learning. I always say student for life, okay? You want to be learning forever as much as you can. That's why I talk about having an art routine and, and a drawing regimen so that you're always practicing your work, practicing your anatomy, your perspective, your your, your solid drawing skills. That's always a constant thing that you should be doing, okay? And if we don't have the answer, maybe we can point you to other people that do. Uh, I've learned, the way I've learned is by being mentored by others. That's why we started the program called The Mentorship because now I get the opportunity and I'm gonna be doing this with a good buddy, uh, Pixar artist Nick Sung, who we're gonna be doing uh, this as co-mentors and you get us both in that mentorship program. So that's gonna be really exciting this year. Uh, so yeah, that's the way you learn. You learn by others and you, you kind of learn, you have to do the work and then have somebody else show you how to make it better. And then you go off and you get more confidence. And then after a while you can do this on your own and you start creating your own style of filmmaking and storytelling and understanding the structure and how to break things down. So it's a, it's a lot of art skills, but it's also a little bit of story structure and writing and understanding the concept of how to, how to create a story, how to piece together a beginning, a middle and end. And that's why I say as a story artist, you're very much like a mini director because you have to take responsibility for your scene and then actually see that all the way through and make those decisions and be bold and be courageous and do something that pushes the envelope. That's why I love story. I, it's the, it's a thrilling thing that you can get into. You know, I, I love animation. I love the, the technical part of, of everything we do, visual effects, all of that stuff. But to me, the being able to manipulate the full picture of the story, there's just nothing else like that. You sit in a room, with people that uh, that for the first time get to see what you've con that what you've constructed basically, and they get to react on a scene that you made, and it's just it's just so fun, it's so thrilling, it really is worth everything to do it. So all the hours and and all this passion that we put into that stuff, it really is worth it. <laughs> all right, my friends, um, I think I want to get into the 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 chat here and answer any questions you guys have because uh, I think there's a lot of stuff that. Um, that we're going to be talking about this whole weekend for story. And I, and just in this opening chat, I thought it's a good idea to kind of let's get into the habit of, of talking a little bit uh, about story as well. Now, uh, if you've had, if you've seen me on the, on live chats, you've seen that uh, I've been doing a lot of live streams recently on Instagram and, um, and we do this on Facebook and our, and also on YouTube. So uh, it's great to, to connect with everybody, but this is an opportunity, hopefully during Lightbox. We can extend that to other people that may not be, uh, you know, kind of in the story art discipline. So maybe you're, you're a concept designer, maybe you're a character designer, maybe you're an animator, maybe you're a visual effects artist or a writer. But all those things need to know about story. All those disciplines need to know about story. So that to me is really, really important. Okay. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Let me bring this up. If anybody has an update, this is from Daniel uh, Ruiz. Uh, if anybody has an update on the server, we're going to continue giving you guys updates. I'm sure the guys at Lightbox are working really hard to get that back up. So just be patient. You know, let's let's give these guys a break. They have been working tremendously to get this event up. I would not be surprised. I really would not be surprised if there are hundreds of thousands of artists participating in the Lightbox event this weekend. It really is global. 
And it's, it's that important. Like we're bringing in, we were saying that this is the biggest artist event of the year and uh, we're part of that. So it's, it's super fun. <laughs> All right, let's see. And then Sai Sarath. This is great. This is exactly what we want to see. I'll bring this up on screen. Hey, Sai, I also noticed that you're part of the mentorship program. Congratulations. Welcome, my friend. I look forward to working with you. Uh, this is your Instagram. I, I invite everybody to share that um, and, and connect. That's how we grow. Okay. Awesome. Let me go through this a little bit. Yeah. And I'll put, put a shout out for, for my boy, Chad here, uh, who let's all connect with him and let's connect with each other. In fact, you can, you can see our Instagram and, and all of that on screen, uh, as well, but, uh, you can check out shadow jacked. Uh, and this is the, the way we do this. I mean, it's like, it's like free promotion, right? You know, there's paid Facebook ads, there's paid YouTube, and Google and, and AdSense and all that stuff, you know, you don't have to do that. It can be organic. In fact, you're going to get more targeted people if you're in a group like this with other artists and you're actually exchanging your, your contact information. That's the way to do it. And you don't have to worry about all those Facebook ads and, and all that nonsense. You know, Facebook has enough money. <laughs> How about we share some of the love amongst each other, okay? <laughs> all right. Yeah, this is a really good tip. Thanks, JC. I love this. So make sure you can upload your portfolio in the Lightbox Expo portfolio database. This was actually really helpful last year uh, at the Lightbox event in Pasadena when we, they had an in-person event. Before the event, they had all the people that signed up uh, enter their info into a database. So the companies could see uh, really talented artists. They could see your website and they can see a little bit of info. That's also carried over this year. And I encourage you guys to do that as well. Cool. I love this. Great. There's a lot of, a lot of conversation going on. A lot of people sharing stuff in, um, in the chat here. I'll bring this up again for, for those of you guys who are, we just talked about the portfolios and thanks again, JC for this. So portfolios.lightbox.com slash register. That way you can see that, um, uh, there. All right. <laughs> yeah, I love this. So I just seen the first lesson today. I want to join the challenge. Well, I'm telling you, you guys can, there's still time. The registration is going to be going through the whole weekend and uh, registration will close at midnight on Sunday. So if you want to get into that drawing and portfolio challenge, you're, get, you're going to want to do that and uh, do us a favor. If you like that content, if that's something that you you really interested in, we're getting really good feedback. Uh, please share it. Please share it with your, with your, with your network and your, and your people. The more that we have in there, uh, the better it is for all of us. It really is. Question. All right. I love this. We're going to bring this up. Alex, the Gator, you're, you're probably one of the first questions that we're going to get officially here on Lightbox Expo. Thanks for participating, my friend. Okay. How do you find the motivation to storyboard personal film projects? Man, let me tell you, this is one of the hardest things <laughs> that you're going to do. It seems like when somebody pays you and they, they schedule you for a job, there's like a little more seriousness and it's almost like you're on the hook. And so you like you owe them something, right? Because now you it's like your, your professional word is on the line. So you get up early, you're there, you're like on point, you're doing your work, everything is awesome. You're you know, you're giving your hundred percent effort, but you're doing work for somebody else. Now you're doing it because you're getting paid, right? But when it comes down to doing your own work, you come home, you're tired, right? You're hungry, you, you you've spent the full day working on somebody else's stuff, and then now all of a sudden you have to pick up the motivation to do your own film or your own project. That's really, really hard. It's a lot harder than, than most people think. Uh, that self-discipline thing is just really, really difficult. So what are some suggestions for this? One, uh, I would recommend highly that you get some kind of partner or friend, some kind of coworker, or just a, a good art buddy to kind of be your, either participate with you or be an accountability partner. That's somebody that's gonna at least be there when you say that you're gonna, you're gonna do something in a month well, then have some milestones, break that down into little pieces and then have that person confirm that with you. And then they're just going to be a, like a like a check in. Right. So if you you know, one trick is to have these guys, if you if you can do this, uh, that kind of partner would if, if you're going to break this down, let's say on weekly milestone at the end of the week, you show them what you've done and just tell them what you what you had planned to do. And so they can repeat that back to you. You say, well, I, you told me you were going to do 100 panels this week. How did it go? Can you show me those 100 panels? And, you know, in a friendly way. And then so they, they almost become like your, your pseudo producer. But that accountability is really, really key because then, then you feel like you're on the hook again like you would in a professional job, okay? The other, the other trick there to do your personal film is 
uh, to really block out the time so that you can give yourself the window of opportunity to do it. So if you're doing it just on nights and weekends, that thing could extend forever and ever. And that might be the only free time you have, but as long as you're consistent with it, that's great. But if you can set out a window of time, so for example, if you have a full-time job and then you get two weeks out of the year, well, maybe you take a week for vacation, take that for yourself. But that other week, 40 hours, you can get a lot done in 40 hours. If you spend that vacation, stay at home, or, or, or if you actually end up going somewhere, but you lock yourself in, you bring your computer, your Cintiq, your laptop, tablet, whatever you got to do to create that, that artwork, and you sit down and you, you knock it out because otherwise you're just not going to get it done. Um, one other recommendation is that you join our community here and let us be the accountability partners for that too. There's a funny uh, kind of story that I heard that, that uh, you would pay somebody, like you can actually physically pay a friend. You give them something significant, like you give them a couple hundred bucks or you know, give them a thousand dollars, which is, you know, that's a lot of money for, for most people. And you, you give that money to your friend up front and you say, uh, if I do the work, uh, you give that money back to me. But if I don't do the work, you get to keep it. Okay. <laughs> so hopefully it's a trusted friend, but that means if you don't do the work, you're going to lose a thousand dollars or something, something significant, right? Even a hundred dollars can hurt. Even $10 hurts, man. I don't like losing any money. So, uh, so that's one way to just make yourself accountable when, cause there's when there's money on the line, people get serious. Okay. So good luck on that. I hope, uh, <laughs> I hope that's going to, the, it's going to work out. Okay. Uh, Cool. Oh, I would mention this. Uh, this is this is a great question. So from uh, Renata here, I'm not sure if you said it earlier, but I would love to know what day there's a chance to show our portfolio with, with you guys. Let me look real quick on the schedule. And uh, we are having a portfolio review. So uh, let's see on this will be on this will be on. Yeah, this will be this will be on Friday, this evening, today. Sorry, I'm getting my days mixed up. So tonight at 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific time, I'm going to be reviewing portfolios. Now, we've gotten flooded with submissions, I must say that, and I'm still getting through all of them just for the portfolio stuff. So we're only going to get to a couple, but I still highly invite you guys to come and check that out because uh, the stuff that I'm going to be saying and we're going to be saying just as a group for people's work is applicable to everybody because you know the the story concepts that we're talking about are pretty universal and the, the concepts for portfolios that you guys are going to see in the drawing and portfolio challenge when you get to the portfolio section like the lesson four and five we're going to be talking about that tonight um at 7 p.m pacific so i invite you guys to see that and um and and uh and then hopefully you know you can you can follow along there all right great question let me go to let me go to the next one here. Here it is. So is it okay to share media links? Absolutely. So I recommend uh, social media stuff. And also if you have like a Dropbox or something that you want to share with people, just make it public. And that way you can do that. All right, cool. Let me, there's a lot of comments here. Let me scroll down and, and check out the, the ones I think are, are most applicable here. All right. Yeah, this is a great one from Elizabeth. Okay, currently studying animation this year. What do you recommend for those starting out in storyboard art? Okay, uh, the first one I tell this to a lot of people, and you've heard me say this if you've been following me for a, for a while, is draw, 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 draw. You need to have your sketchbook with you at all times. You need to have a drawing regimen. You need to learn your anatomy, your perspective, your proportions for human figures, and all of the art skills you should be drawing as much as humanly possible. Now, even if you want to get into 3D or do some previs and you don't necessarily want to use drawing as your medium, the fact that you can actually sketch something, even if it's rough, it doesn't have to be amazing. It's not Michelangelo here. You can just do something that communicates the idea. That's what you want to be doing first. Okay, learn that because it takes a long time to get your drawing skills up to up to snuff. It really does. And but with constant practice, just like music, right? If you learn your scales. You know, the first month, it's going to be really hard. But after the second, third, fourth, fifth, the whole year, you're going to be awesome doing your scales and, and being a, a good musician. Same thing goes for art. So that's what you want to be doing there, too. The other thing that I recommend is finding a good resource to do that. Now, uh, I will shamelessly plug my book, 
that I made with uh, my my co-author Anson Jew, who's also another really badass uh, story artist in LA doing live action movies. And we put together uh, material for that book. That's one way to get started. Uh, I think a lot of people have gotten a good response. You can see the reviews on, on Amazon and whatever. Uh, hopefully it's helpful for you guys there, but I would recommend that. At least you have some kind of guide, okay? And then thirdly, and this is another shameless plug, I would say go to Storyboard Art. That's what we're here for. We're talking about story, visual storytelling. We have a lot of free resources. So if you're just starting now, you don't have a lot of money, maybe you don't have a lot of time, or you're still in school and you're juggling a bunch of things, you can see our videos and our, our content uh, most of that stuff is free. Now we do sponsor paid classes. Like if you re really want to level it up, well, uh, come to the mentorship, and that's where we're really going to get serious and talk about how to boost your skills for 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 the for the professional level. And then also, I would recommend even if you're starting out, this is a great chance to do it. Join the drawing and portfolio challenge. Okay, so I'll repeat that one <laughs> there too. Thanks for the question. Uh, this is a great question. The technical question. I love this. So Sai is asking. I am planning on investing some money on a new tablet. Is it worth getting a display tablet or a normal pen tablet is more than enough? You know, this is, you're gonna have to, um, you're gonna have to weigh how much money you have and your, your finances here, because I think my, my basic recommendation is you get something that you can draw on. That's all you need. So uh, if, you, if I can turn this to the camera a little bit, you can see my screen and, and how I'm projecting here, but I got a, this is my Cintiq monitor. In fact, let me let me close all this, and I'll sh just show you real quick. This is what I use to draw on. This is a 24-inch Cintiq. It's a number of years old, and I'll pull up Sketchbook Pro, and and then I'll show you know this is the the basic thing that you need to draw with. Okay, that's you, you basically need this setup and have this kind of digital drawing monitor uh, for that. Now again, this one I I, I got it new, but uh, it's a number of years old now. In fact, you can get a used one that works just as fine. There's no, there's no reason why you have to spend a bunch of money uh, on new equipment that maybe you can't afford right now. Okay, so I, I highly recommend you don't get into debt or any of that stuff. Another good recommend, <coughs> excuse me, another good recommendation here would be to get a tablet like a, an an iPad Pro is amazing. It's really, really good. I know a lot of artists who are using the iPad uh, Pro to do work. They use Procreate. That you can use uh, Photoshop with the, with the iPad app, and you can use Adobe, uh, not Adobe, excuse me, uh, Autodesk Sketchbook in an app on there. And I think Manga Studio Pro is, is that one that you can use on an app instead of a desktop. Um, but anyway, uh, that's that's enough. That's a little bit less uh, expensive than than throwing down for a big Cintiq. But the other thing I would recommend too is uh, a Microsoft Surface Pro, which is a small like tablet, and that one is actually a computer. One runs Windows, so I really like that because I use Windows. I use you know the Adobe Suite, and I can edit things on there uh, for After Effects and, and all that. And I recommend that that computer if you're going to do um, for if you want to draw. Now I have a desktop setup, and I have my desktop setup for my my Wacom. So this is like the big beefy <laughs> setup. But I you know if you if you're just starting out, you want something portable. You know, go with a tablet or go with a, a tablet PC. There's a couple of cheap options that you can do. And my go-to for getting computers, my friends, is uh, is actually Costco. For those of you guys who are, who are out in, in the U.S. Now, Costco has an incredible warranty. They give you at least two years warranty on a, on a new computer. And uh, their prices are pretty damn good. So <laughs> you might check that out, all right? Um, Amazon is also great for that. All right, this is a great question from Nick here. Uh, all of, all of my stuff in the portfolio is a, as an animatic. Is that a problem? Should I add more traditional sheets? Uh, yes. <laughs> the answer there is yes. If you have really awesome kick-ass animatics, that's great. But you, this is the recommendation I still give to people. You still want to have like a PDF portfolio. And it's a digital version of like of your printouts, let's say. And it has you know, a bunch of, of, uh, of storyboard panels on there. Because that's still, you know, the, the studios still want to see your still panel, your drawing, to see how well you're drawing, your, your composition, your, your perspective, all of those things, in addition to your timing and your animatic stuff. Because I think what happens in an animatic, you can kind of get by by having a little bit sloppy uh, storyboard panels, but there's no hiding a storyboard panel if you actually, you know, make a PDF or, or put it on your portfolio. People can, can stare at it for a long time. You really need both to apply to companies and um, and studios. So that's that's one recommendation there. If you go to you know coming up in lesson four and five, I show how you do that 
in, uh, in the drawing portfolio challenge. And that's what we're going to be talking about. We can talk about that a little bit more this weekend. So, um, so that's something really cool. Great suggestion here from JC. Uh, Pro Procreate on iPad Pro, you can use Clip Studio Pro. Uh, yeah, so I was confused about the name there. Manga Studio was what it was. It used to be called. So Clip Studio Pro, I've heard really good things. I haven't used that personally, but I've heard really good things. I've seen Procreate, that's really good too. Um, yeah, and so this is a good question from Miguel is uh, for the portfolio re review today, can we use a mix of personal work and the assignments? Absolutely. Whatever you have to show, I'd love to see it. Um, if it's in a portfolio format, that's kind of the uh, that's kind of the, the goal and the idea, but I, I love seeing artwork. So whatever you have to show would be great. Um, cool. Yeah, let me just, uh, this is another great, good question about the portfolio review. So uh, Aloka2000 here. So is it possible to submit my portfolio for a review, even if it isn't very updated? Um, also might as well plug my Instagram. You better, there you go. You should, everybody should hit him up at ratface underscore 96. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes, the, the, the answer there is, is absolutely. Even if it's not your current work, at least you're going to get some feedback on what you're doing. Now, you might know that you're going to hit those images again and give an update. That's totally cool. But um, the idea is that you, uh, you at least get some, some notes or some kind of comments from, from outsiders. Okay. Now, it doesn't have to be me. It could be other art people that you trust. Uh, it's just the idea that um, you have a guide and other people's opinion to improve your portfolio presentation. I should mention that too. You know, I'm going to be doing a lot, you know, I host a lot of these events and I'm also going to be hosting the round table for, um, from everybody else. And th that's cool. You know, we're, we're working pros and, and that, that's all good, but it comes down to your own style and your own opinion. So what you have to do, is you have to have your brain on, you gotta be a critical thinker. And if somebody gives you some kind of feedback, you have to process that. So don't all automatically assume that that person is right or that person is wrong. You want to take in that feedback, absorb it, and then, and then, you know, think about it critically. Is it worth what that person says? So if somebody's going to make a comment like myself, well, I'm making a comment on your work and I say, well, how about tilting the lens or maybe the, it needs more depth or the composition is not as uh, exciting as it could be. Well, you're going to have to think, am I, am I right? Is my comment on target? Or do you like the image as it is and you want to, and you're able to defend it? If you can say to me, well, I don't want to tilt the camera lens because I really like this, this very, you know, very static image to show somebody who's really noble or to show a calm event before the storm. Okay. Well, that's great. Cause you've thought about the story point. So then my comment is irrelevant, but if I'm calling you out on things that, that maybe you didn't see before, right. That a lot of people cut off, uh, you know, cut off the characters on different different parts of the body that are, that don't feel good. Like they might cut off the guy at the neck, they might cut him off at the joint or an elbow. It's a weird a weird hand pose, and they they drew it, but they didn't actually realize they did it that way. So when somebody else points it out, you say, "Oh, okay, that's true. I need better silhouette. I need to have better framing. You know, widen the camera lens a little bit." Those are the kinds of tips that you should pay, be paying attention to. So that's that's what you would do in a portfolio review. All right. Cool. So bringing up another question here, uh, keep them coming. You guys, this is really, really great. Okay. So, um, do studios prefer digital, draw digital drawings and portfolios rather than hand drawn paper photocopy boards? Uh, I think the, the general answer there is yes. Okay. Now it didn't always used to be that way, but the times have changed. Everything's gone digital, especially for production work, production studios working at on any major film, most likely you're going to be doing digital work. It's very rare unless you're working on location and even on location, people bring their tablets, you know, they're charged up and they're ready to go. I still work on paper, but for professional stuff, I, I rarely do it because it's so much easier to work on a number of layers scan, you know, without having to scan those in and you can manipulate things. So if somebody says, Oh, that foreground layer, I don't like, can you rotate that? You know, you go back into your, your program, open up the image, do a change in, in three minutes and then export out that, that um, that drawing again whereas back in the day what you had to do is like cut you know make a photocopy literally on a photocopy machine cut cut and paste and then you know, blow it up rotate it whatever you have to do and then redraw it if it was if it, if it wasn't acceptable so it's really not I, I don't advise you to do hand-drawn stuff now for any of the events that we're doing the drawing portfolio challenge 
uh, even the mentorship, if you really want to draw on paper, that's great, but you're going to have, you're, you might be at a disadvantage as far as speed and also uh, just like legibility wise and some of the techniques that we're using nowadays, because you can duplicate, copy, rotate, scale, all of those things instantly. Whereas if you're doing them on paper, you have to do that manually. So I've done both and I, I, I have come to the conclusion <laughs> that the digital tools are really there for, for our advantage. So um, think about that. All right, this is a great question here too. As I bring that up, let me have a sip of water, my friends. Cheers. Okay, what do you think about drawing in VR for, for storyboarding? Uh, this is, I, I think I mentioned this a couple of times because I've done a, a couple of VR projects and I've storyboarded them out. Now, what's, what's hilarious about VR to me is that when it came out, it was like, oh man, they've changed cinema. Now it's VR, now you can see everything, 360 degrees and the cameras. You know, I don't know what we're going to do. It's like, there's no frame. And I thought to myself, that is such bogus. You haven't changed anything. Like, you know, cinematography, visual storytelling has not changed one bit just because you change the medium, just because your camera can see more and that the audience member can actually look around does not mean the focal point of the shot has changed, right? The storytelling concept has not changed. So I get into these heated discussions with some, some buddies because – I think it's bunk. So you can still have a frame. You you still you will always have a focal point of your shot. And if you don't, there you're doing something wrong. Because there's no reason in throwing something out there that makes no sense visually, that has a sequential order that's the beginning, middle, and end. And it's just people in, in an area. Then you're talking about a concert that you could put a 3D, you know, 360 camera there. Because there's no story. <laughs> what I'm talking about is story. In a story, you have to construct the focal point of each and every shot, there's a story point for each and every shot. And it doesn't matter if you can see 360 degrees or not, you're still going to have that, that story point. So you're going to have to describe the camera angle in the proper form. Now, the way you draw it, that could change. You could have a frame or not. You could do it in a really bent, equi-rectangular format, uh, or you can do it in your normal 69 by 9 format. Here's what I would do for, for VR, just to keep it simple. Use a widescreen format. It could be like a two, three, five. That's enough. And then just do your normal storyboard. And then if you have to expand the background to show other things going on, that's fine. But if the focus of the shot changes, like all of a sudden something comes in from screen right or screen left, and then you have to um, you have the character pan that way, then that's you know then you've changed the focus. Let's do a new storyboard in that case, right? And actually show the pan that you're doing in the storyboard. So. Um, so yeah, drawing from VR is pretty much the same as I would do any other project. Now, what a couple of things that do help is if you do previs and you, you bring this into like a game engine or a blender program, a 3D engine will help a lot because you can bring in 2D cards and 2D boards and then you can have them in a 3D environment so you can easily move the camera around if you're doing these kinds of uh, uh, you know VR tricks. So that's one way to do it. Um, yeah, give us your VR experience there too. All right, let me work up, work our way down here. Uh, great questions, by the way. I love this. Now, this is so applicable. Now, we're going to be talking about this too, especially in the roundtable. So Cesar here is asking, how viable is a remote work career in storyboard? I live in Mexico, and I want to start working in more international projects. Do you have to move to LA London hub to have a start? Um, you know, that used to be the case. My answer today is no. And uh, I think you guys can all respond. You might want to mention where you're from. But I know a lot of people that are spread out all over the world. And I'm actually not in L.A. I'm not in San Francisco uh, anymore. I'm actually in, in Scottsdale, Arizona. And, um, you know, I built up a network. I can, I can do my work and do freelance. And with a good Internet connection, you can beam out and, and send your work to everywhere, to everywhere. Now, if you're in Mexico, I know in, in, um, in the capital, in the F, you can actually – there is a – film community there. I've met those guys because I worked on a project uh, down there in Mexico for the little boy film that I worked on. And um, and so you can connect to people anywhere. In fact, Mexico actually, I, from what I know, has a, has a decent uh, film community in, in the country. I'm not exactly sure what city they're, they're concentrated in. I'm pretty sure the capital city, though, has a pretty good film community. But this relates to what's going on right now. There's a pandemic going on, right? <laughs> so with this pandemic, uh, people are forced to work at home. So this remote working environment has been, has been, has been tested and vetted. And my, 
my prediction for the future is that this trend is going to continue, uh, partly for a number of reasons, because the costs are going to go down to actually having production artists. It's really expensive to pay uh, well-trained artists and have them in a studio and just, you know, the space, the computers, you know, the, the support system that you need for, for a production studio is really, really expensive and not to mention the salary and the healthcare and all that stuff. So uh, I can I can easily see that the trend will go if people working freelance from their home studios and their home setups. And then you can, you know, the studios will save a little bit of money on the, on the setup, hopefully that you can charge a decent rate. And then you can also forget about the commute. <laughs> so you don't have to, you know, travel an hour or whatever you're going to get to a studio, get there in traffic, you know, come home all tired and hungry, <laughs> which I did for many years. Uh, so that I think is a, is a positive trend that we're seeing as a result of some, some of the stuff that's going on in this pandemic, right? Uh, so yes, the, so how do you do this? Uh, what you do need to do is connect with people like we're doing here at Lightbox. You want to make those connections, make your network, and at least get yourself out there that people know your work exists and that you can charge a competitive rate and that you're going to do a good job. That's the most important thing is that you're going to solve people's story problems. You're going to solve their problems and create a really cool project for them. And by doing that, it's going to make it worth the money that you're charging them for. And they're going to be overjoyed to pay you because, again, trained story artists are really hard to find. So, yeah, I you know hopefully you guys can uh, share some some stories about this. But I really do think that you can work from anywhere nowadays. And this is great because if you're in a lower cost of living, because I imagine Mexico is probably cheaper than New York City or L.A., um, depending on where you live, that, you know, you could save some money, just cost of living. And um, and it, the, the big thing that you're going to need is, you know, have a good setup, have a good quality Internet connection. And that's always going to be key there. All right. Uh, cool. <laughs> this one's like a low. This one's like uh, a, a, what do you call that? A slow, slow lob, like a. A, an easy question here, um, a softball, right? <laughs> Are there any live online courses provided by you about visual storytelling that people can attend so that they would be ready to get jobs in the industry? My friend, you just you just gave it to me on a platter. Like the first thing I'm going to say <laughs> is come to the drawing and portfolio challenge that we've been talking about this whole this whole event. And then if you if if you like that, come to the mentorship, man. Our mentorship for 2020. The registration is open. I just invite you to go to that to the go to the registration page. There's a ton of information on there. There's actually a bunch of videos and a lot of student examples that we put from some of the people who are participating in this event event right now. If you want to get to the pro level, I think you owe it to yourself to check out some of the resources that we have. Because honestly, I can say this with confidence. I don't know anywhere out there in the world can I can I, you know I'm going to be bold like that. That is doing what we're doing with the mentorship. We got two ultra pro mentors, myself included, humbly, <laughs> but our good badass uh, Nick Sun is participating. And we're going for a year long in this course. And that's going to get you prepared and get you ready. And, uh, you know, I love seeing the responses that we have so far for the people that signed up. And even past mentorship students have been, uh, have been posting their reactions there. And I just, it really is uh, satisfying for me to, to know that we've done a good job to train people. And get them ready for for the pro uh, for the pro storytelling. So anyway, check that out. I'm gonna do that's that's enough. I'm gonna say because you're gonna think I'm I'm trying to do a sales pitch here. <laughs> um, all right, let's move on to some other questions. I love it. We're we're, we're we got about ten minutes left. So any questions you guys want to throw in there, uh, let me know. We'll, we'll see if we can get to it. Now I should also mention that this whole talk is being recorded, and you guys are gonna get to see the replay. So if you can't catch this live any of the talks this weekend, you can always see the replay on our social media. It's going to be posted on YouTube and Facebook uh, after the fact that we do these events. All right. Yeah, I love it. This is Nick is saying, yeah, remote makes so much more sense. And uh, <laughs> I hope the suits get it soon. Yeah. You know, I, I think there was a, there was a, a fear in doing this kind of remote working because they, many studios felt the productivity would go down. And also they're afraid about confidentiality and can they keep things secure? And I think in these, in these times, I know many production studios, I'm in touch with a lot of the guys, and we're going to talk about this in the round table event. Um, 
that they have been just as productive and the flow of work has been has continued and the security issues with technology now those problems are pretty solved everything is really really solid so um so i don't think that is much of a concern nowadays and so yeah let's let's uh let's support that uh a <laughs> hey, big shout out to my my friend josh Agam it's a, i always screw up your name agama long right and uh uh you were a past mentorship student i love hearing your your uh, replies that, that I've been seeing in the group. I hope you're doing well, my friend. Uh, uh, keep it up. Uh, all right, let me bring this up here. So uh, this was a response that you had to a question on here. So I, I thought I would put it up on screen. If you're working live action commercial films, you gotta be quick. When I work on commercials, 20 to 30 second, 20 to 30 shots a day, but I have to be prepared for 60 to 70 shots uh, if up against it, that, that is a lot. I, I've done that before. And I know what you're talking about. It's really hard to get that, even to get 20 panels a day, you know, and I, I do the math for people. Sometimes I get this question a lot. How many panels can you draw a day? Right. How many storyboard panels? It varies on the type of work. It varies on the project. And obviously the more time you have, the more polished your boards are going to be right. The less time you have, the less polished your boards are going to be. They still have to be clear. They still have to give the story point, but uh, you have less time. So there's going to be less rendering. There's going to be less shading. Maybe it's just line work. Maybe it's just simple thumbnails. And that's what ends up happening if I have to do 70 boards a day, right? Like you probably, you know, familiar with that, Alex. So thank you for that, for that note. I think, um, I think it's really hard to get that. And what you should do in a job is you should ask what the expectations are up front. You should say how many, what, what's the quality of finish that you want? What's the rendering style? If you want shadows and really tight line work, you know, that takes a lot of time. And so you have to ask people up front what they're expecting because uh, if they don't need that and they just want something quick. Well, then you can, you can do a little bit more shortcuts and get that out the door. But I always say, you know, doing the math, if you divide the number of hours you work in a day. So if you work an eight hour day, um, if you do an, a drawing at an hour, it's only eight, it's only eight panels. I could easily spend an hour on a couple of storyboards, especially something that's complicated like a camera move. And I've done that before. And man, it really hurts because, you know, I have to speed up and do, you know, a faster job on the rest of the panels. So that's only eight panels a day. So imagine what you're going to have to do for 70 panels. You're going to have to knock one out like every, every 15 minutes, <laughs> right? Or less. So, um, so then you're going to get really fast, really quick. <laughs> All right, let me see this. Uh, this is a great question here from Hadley Kennedy. I rarely see professional boards that use brushes with, with pressure sensitivity. Is that frowned upon in the industry or is it okay to use pressure sensitive brushes? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think what you're seeing uh, for the most part is probably artists uh, using a, a set series of brushes that are pretty bold and, and pretty crisp and they have like a, a thick line work that doesn't have the pressure sensitivity or maybe I know in Toon Boom, Toon Boom uses vector vector brushes. They also have bitmaps, but you can use vector. If you guys know what I'm talking about, it's the it's the fact that you can um, have a infinite resolution on these these vector lines that you draw, but there is it doesn't have the the, the nice like faded pressure sensitivity that you get in other programs like a Photoshop or Sketchbook, um, Autodesk Sketchbook. So I think what you're seeing as a result of artists, of certain storyboard artists choosing particular brushes, but there's no, there's no standard accepted way of drawing it. I actually prefer doing brushes with a pressure sensitivity. I use a thinner line than most people. In fact, when you see my boards, um, that's good and bad. It's kind of bad because sometimes my, my compositions don't seem as bold. Like there's not as much depth in the characters that I draw. And sometimes I have to go over with a second line and make those things pop out with a nice, nice thick, bold, clear line. Um, but I know artists who start with like a big, almost like a Sharpie marker. You remember like the old school Sharpie markers, right? I have one back here um, on my desk. It's like, it's like one of these, it's got a thick, you know, a thick tip to it. Right. And so this is, um, this is something that you can mimic inside a digital program. So I think a lot of people prefer that and it's easier to just get it out of the way. It's one less thing to think about if you're trying to do like fading with pressure sensitivity, but um but no, you can draw whatever you want. I think the main thing you want to remember is to keep your drawing clear. The story point, the composition, and everything you put in that composition has to be clear. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. All right.
let's go here to Rachel has a question. Oh, I lost it in the feed. Uh, give me one second. Let me find that again. Oh, I love the conversation, by the way. This is this is amazing. There's tons of comments. So I just lost the one that I was going to uh, bring up here. Let me see. Yeah, well, let me, Kelly is, is just kind of answering the question here. Uh, pressure sensitivity is more of a speed thing than a quality thing. Uh, usually it, sh it slows people down, so that's probably why you see folks turn it off. Thanks, that's that's great. Uh, it's kind of what I was trying to get at. Okay, let's get this one from WYD28. Any resources on staging a scene, especially for one panel shots? How do you choose character poses, environments, etc.? cetera? Uh, that's a good question. As far as resources, the only things I can really point you to are a couple of books that I think I got something out of, but for a sing it, it's not going to be the solution. Um, uh, one of them is A Shot by Shot, uh, which is a famous um, kind of filmmaking book. Uh, I forget the author's name. Maybe you guys can help me out in, in the chat. Uh, the other uh, book I would recommend is Five Seas of Cinematography. I also forget the author's name, but that's a, a really well-known book by a famous cinematographer back in the day. And there you can, it will help you compose an image. But the other thing that you really want to understand is the storytelling. What, what are you trying to get across in your scene? So when you say staging, it's the idea of constructing the scene so that all of the elements work together. You have a foreground, middle ground, background. Hopefully you're showing a character in the right angle so you can see their character's face if that's what it is. If you're staging a fight, you want to pull the camera out a little bit wider so you can see more of the action. So it all really depends on the subject matter and the scene that you're trying to do. Um, yeah, you know, you could come and see some of our talks. I, I, I talk a lot about staging. You're going to see that in not in the drawing portfolio challenge necessarily. We do talk a little bit about single panel images, but uh, in the mentorship for sure, that's a really big topic that we go over. Um, yeah, cool. Let me go to some some other stuff. Yeah, we're almost at the end of the great discussion, by the way. I hope you guys are are seeing the value in exchanging ideas here because you're going to get answered to maybe common questions that that you. That, that come up a lot. This is also a common question. So Brandon Hill is asking, do you think age is a factor in hiring new artists uh, to studios or in the industry, or is it only up to the work and the art? I'm 36 right now. Uh, hmm, 36, man, that you're in your prime. Like why, <laughs> why is age a, a factor if you're 36? Pardon me as I have, have some water. You might be referring to the fact that maybe you haven't actually gotten into storyboards and you're 36 years old. Okay, if you don't have experience, no big deal. Maybe you've had experience in other things. Maybe you've been working in design and in, I don't know, animation or just a non-related office job, but you're a mature adult now. <laughs> so then hopefully, right? Knock on wood if you're not like screwing around playing video games all day. But uh, if you're like, if you got it together and you can put together a portfolio, you can show that you can do the skills, age does not matter. It doesn't matter how young you are. And it certainly doesn't matter how old you are. We get that question a lot. Can, you know, if you're in your 50s, 60s, 70s, man, I don't care. I've worked with people in their 70s and they're awesome, like incredible badasses. Like these guys were like, you're bowing down to these veteran people. Um, those, that's where I want to be. That's, that's what I'm shooting for, to, to be like that. <laughs> they're my heroes. I want to be like that when I'm their age, okay? And so, um, so yeah, age is not a factor. You just have to have the skills. So yeah, it's up to your work and your art. In fact, I wouldn't tell anybody your age. It doesn't matter. Who cares? <laughs> right? Uh, it might be cool that, you know, we're actually getting people that are, a lot of young artists are coming to see us uh, with some of the challenge events and everything else. There was an artist that, that chatted with, uh, with us the other day that was 14 years old. Uh, in the last year in Lightbox, a 16-year-old uh, came up and this girl was awesome. And she, she wanted, wanted to get into storyboarding. So I love seeing the younger artists that come out there. Uh, yeah, for sure. I love it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Kuro. You're, you're, you know, repeating what I'm saying here. You're still young. <laughs> yes, I think, I think we're all still young. If you're, if you're doing art and you love movies, that means you're young at heart. Okay. And that's what's important. <laughs> okay, cool. Let me see. I'm just, I'm sorry. There's tons of questions going on. I love the uh, interaction and also, you guys are answering a lot of these questions before I even get to them. So that's great. Keep that up, this, this whole really cool interaction. Let's see here. 
yeah, the feed is going back so fast that uh, that I have I don't have a chance to catch up to this. All right. Woohoo! Okay. I think I'm at the bottom of the feed. All right, cool. Yes, I love it. Dutch Girl Gaming. All right, you're 17 years old. I want to see what you can do. Apply yourself. Get serious about this. Have some fun with it. By, by serious, I mean just, just enjoy it. Just you know, do it on a constant basis. And this goes for anybody. I don't care if you're 17 or 117. You should still be doing this stuff. This is how you get good at something, okay? But the fact that you're so young and, and, and hopefully into it now – um, that, you know, you have a long way to go. You're just at the beginning. I tell people when they come to the, our, our courses and our classes, you are just at the beginning of hopefully a very long career. And this is a marathon, not a sprint. So you have to pace yourself. You have to pace yourself throughout. Don't burn yourself out and uh, make sure you're being consistent, right? You're, every day you're drawing something. Every day you're doing it. And that includes weekends, right? You have your sketchbook by your side and you're actually doing something creative. You're thinking about stories all the time. That's what you want to be doing. That's really important for this. Okay, so um, so hopefully that that makes some sense. Now, let me see. Let me just look if we have any more questions on this. Now, if I didn't get to your questions too, we're gonna to do a lot of these live streams, and hopefully we can answer your question in our Facebook group and uh, and offline as well. So again, a reminder here that um, that the uh, that these chats are recorded. And that you're going to be able to see the replay on our social media. Okay, I got distracted with this question, so let me bring this up. Uh, Aloka again is, is saying when you when drawing a bunch of iterations, when thumbnailing, thumbnailing a sequence, I sometimes overdo it and feel like I need to include everything. How do you go about cutting out panels? Well, I think that edit, editing process is actually uh, is actually good, and it's, it's easier sometimes than actually coming up with the idea. So let's say you know you're, you're thumbnailing out something. And you're, you're just, you know, unloading, kind of like brainstorming and coming up with, with the sequence. And, yeah, it might not all be there. So, but then what you have to do is you might maybe take this as a, a recommendation. Get up, get out of your chair, take a walk, you know, maybe grab a bite to eat or something. Take a break, right? Then when you come back, sit back down to that same sequence and look at it with some fresh eyes. And then you can go and start editing and say, Does the, do these shots flow in the right order that I need them? And think hard about your story point. So, so storytelling is really one action after another. So, uh, you know, you could have, and it's as simple as like telling a story. So a guy comes into the door, you know, the guy comes into the room by opening the door. Then he sits down at the couch and then he starts talking to the person next to him. Then he grabs a drink and then he goes up and he walks to the kitchen, right? That's a series of statements. It's a series of actions. And each one you want to show in the right time, in the right moment with the right camera angle. And that's how you have to break these things down kind of logically. Now, you do this with drawings, and I'm just saying this out loud, but that's how you would break it down. Then you do the editing process, and hopefully you whittle it down to the most efficient and the most accurate representation of what you want to do for your story. That's kind of the big theory of how to do it, all right? All right, guys, I think that is a great uh, place to kind of uh, end this one. I will remind you that uh, we have another talk coming up at 3 p.m. Uh, this afternoon, my time. And let me just bring up the schedule and remind myself what we're doing. Yep, we're going to be talking about uh, booster storytelling skills with these five key tips. So I have – this is a little bit different from the Drawing Portfolio Challenge. I have some, some cool tips to give you. And these are practical tips. So it's not just like draw and be happy and all that stuff. No, I'm going to talk about specific technical things that you should be doing in your work. And we're going to cover five of them because I could go on and on about these. But these five main points – are, are really key things that you want to be doing, not only for your portfolio, but just your work in general to tell your story. So come to that one. It's going to be 3 to 4 p.m. Pacific time. Again, we're, we're going to be recording these things if you missed that chat, but I highly invite you to come here and also do a lot of the sharing and interacting with everybody else in this group. My friends, thank you for participating and joining me in this first inaugural event for Lightbox Expo 2020. And we are sponsoring a bunch of stuff this whole weekend. So I, I hope you come see us. And just I'll bring up the landing page again so you can, can remind yourselves of that. Come check this out at prostoryboardart.org slash LBX2020. You're going to see the whole lineup of events there. All right. On the way out, you're going to see the logo. And we're going to sign off. Thank you, my friends. I really appreciate you uh, participating, being an inspiration to us all. 
and uh, good luck on all the projects that you're working on. All right, we'll see you pretty soon at 3 p.m. later on today. Okay, take care.